Welcome to you, our cherished and discerning listeners. It's another beautiful and blessed Wednesday, and we're happy to bring you another exciting edition of your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass is also brought to us today by GCB, GCB, your bank for life. If you're looking to take that holiday or do that home makeover, it's that time of the year when people want to take a break, step back, take a breather, and then go back to the remainder of the year. By all means, do get in touch with GCB and they'll be happy to make that dream come true. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2.15 p.m. here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. My name, as always, is Yabanafu and I'll be your host for the show today. A very big thank you to my brother and good friend Daryl Carl for sitting in for me uh, last week. Fine gentleman by all standards. Daryl, thank you from me and from the listeners of Masterclass. Great job last week. Last week in that conversation with Daryl, he spoke with Dennis Brown of the PwC, an advisory firm, and they spoke to us about investments. So looking at investments from the perspective of the investor and also of the lender. And there are two things when I listened to that show that stuck with me. Um, two terminologies he shared. He talked about debt funding and equity funding. And for me, those two things stuck with me because the should I say the difference between them was very significant. In one of the cases, you look at people giving you money and asking for a seat on your board to make the decisions for a period of time, at the end of which they'll cash out. So they are part of your company and part of your management process. And the other option also, you also look at people just giving you money, billing you an interest also on the money they've given you at the end of period and then you paying back. So depending on the nature of your or the situation that you're in, one of these two would be a suitable uh, option for you. Dennis of PwC, good afternoon to you and thank you for being on the show last week. We are still in the classroom, uh, classroom 101. We went out into the into the field to talk to our businessmen, the startup um, um, dialogue series. But today we're, we're continuing in the classroom and we're going to be spending time talking about Another very interesting topic, which is critical to our business owners, which is the topic of corporate governance and leadership, corporate governance and leadership. Not too long ago, 2018, 2019, we had a significant um, uh, encounter here in Ghana where we had the, the banking sector blowout. And uh, among many of the reasons that were assigned to that incident was one of indiscipline in the area of corporate governance among most institutions. It's not just the banking sector, it's across all industry, and which is why the new Companies Act comes very, very strongly at corporate governance, if you like, in general. The boardroom, who becomes a board member. I've said here on the show many times that the fact that you own a company doesn't mean that you have to be on the board. You can be the majority shareholder. Right now, the, the liability of board members has increased, and I'm sure that our guest today will share with us um, how vicarious the liability has become and how you can still be in charge of your company without necessarily being on the board. Why is it even important? People say that my business is small. Do I need a board? We will find out all of that and more today. My resource person for the show um, has one of the... I was talking to him backstage before we started. I'm introducing him shortly. He has one of those resumes that... Um, when I grew up, I want to be like him, but let me just try and touch on. So he's an investor, he's a banker, he's an entrepreneur, and he puts the three words together and says he's an invest bankpreneur. With 29 years of working experience, he's, he holds a doctorate in business administration from the United Kingdom, an MSc in sociology and economics. He's worked in many countries, in Germany, in the UK. He's done work with Danida in Gambia, here in Ghana. If I want to read his resume, we will, by the time I finish, we'll have ended the show. But there's so much information he wants to share with us. My guest for this afternoon is in the person of Dr. Bernard Tete Dumanya, who is also the CEO of the TD Africa Group. Dr. Dumanya, you're welcome to the show. Thank you, Manapo. <laughs> I was looking at your CV and I was like, Shay, no, people yeah. are not joking, girl. This is our paperwork. <laughs> no, but Charlie, it's information. Yeah, yeah. Doc, I'm excited to have you here. Yes. Yeah, I mean, when I looked at the synopsis you sent to me, um, it's quite a bit, but the expected outcome of this course will be privileged to have you for a few more times, um, apart from today. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we'll just come to understand in generality the concept of corporate governance. If we know it already, we'll get to refresh our knowledge. A very good afternoon to my big brother, Roxin Dogwega, um, IOD uh, boss, and uh, he's very big on corporate governance as well. So yeah. I'm sure that they'll be excited. Dr. Nete is also okay. big on corporate governance yeah. and all the people at the IOD. A very good afternoon to you. We're talking about corporate governance today, so call somebody to call somebody. When we get interactive, pick up the phone, give us a call, and let's share education so that our business people can become better. I always say that if our businesses become better, our economy becomes better, and our nation becomes better, and we all become better for it. Doc, take us back to the classroom if you like on the issue of corporate governance and leadership. Talk right. to us. 
Thank you, Mr. Apo. Um, a good afternoon to our listeners. Um, before I start, I want to thank my my boss, Constance. Right. I mean, um, he's able to make it happen. Yeah. And uh, this thing has been championed by the Commodities Investment Ghana Limited, mm -hmm. which is a Ghanaian-owned entity and they are into corporate governance, among other things, mm. that they want to help co uh, companies to start. Now, my discussion here, and I'm happy you mentioned um, this thing, I kept on telling people that anything, any theory that is more than five years old is absolute. It mm. doesn't work. Mm. Because mm. my discussion is, is at the background of COVID-19 pandemic issues, and as well as we know this Ukraine and um, Russia Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. So a lot of theories has been disproved. So I'm going to speak into the practicality. Mm -hmm. By being a Christian, I will start by uh, quoting the scripture. In Genesis 1:28, it says that God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish on the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and everything living that move upon the earth. Mm. Now, a few things that I want us to take note as my um, preliminary um, uh, discussion for this. Doc, just before you continue, to remind our listeners that we're streaming live on Facebook, those of you who want to watch us live. And Doc has been magnanimous enough to give us slides for everything he's going to say. So for those of us who also like to take notes, by all means, join us on Facebook. We're sharing those slides as well. Doc, please continue. All right, thank you. So uh, I'm saying that in this scripture, um, the Bible talks about fruitfulness, multiplication, replenish, subject. And he said that, if you look at that, I say, and have dominion. And the dominion here is what I term as a corporate governance and leadership. Because you see, dominion is to govern, to rule, to control, to manage. Mm -hmm. And when these principles are not strictly followed, like we said, one of the key issues that runs through the banking crisis was about corporate governance. Yeah. And corporate governance is not only limited to companies and businesses. It, even your marriage, your home, you as a person, if you are not able or you are not disciplined in that, then you continue to blame people as to what has happened. So it is important for us to look at this. And then to start with, I want to break certain things so that we progress as we go along. Please do. So I look at corporate. Corporate, yeah. as we all know, is a legal, legally a separate and distinct entity <coughs> from its owners. Like you said, people think that because I own a company and then automatically I can do. And this remind me, I was restructuring one of these businesses. And the first time that I was able to rate 4 million Ghana cities for them, the owner was so happy. He started calling the girlfriends. He started calling this. <laughs> and within a few times, he squandered all the money. Calling the car company. Yes. Buying new cars. So sometimes I'll be driving and somebody will call me. You know, this owner says I should call you. He owns us 150000 But every corporate entity is a legal entity. And yeah. that's nothing. So you don't necessarily mean to run a company if you have the majority shareholding, like mm. you said. On the other hand, governance encompasses the system by which an organization controls and operates and the mechanism by which its people are held to account. Um, so you realize that when you go up in terms of governance, we say, oh, declare your assets, do this. All these things File are... your taxes. Exactly. All these things are things that inure to our benefit. But oftentimes we ignore them and then we flow us. And today I'm going to address some of these things and what kind of pain that causes us as a people. Mm. So ethics, risk management, compliance, and administrations are some of the elements that we can, we can talk about. So governance is therefore the decisions and actions of people who run like a home, like a house, like a business, like a city, like a country. And therefore it is behold on us to practice good governance. Because it's only by good governance that institutions can produce results. So if you have an institution is not producing results, forget it. It means that you must go back and check about your corporate governance. So it is important for us to take note of some of these things. Does corporate governance apply to churches? Every, everybody. I say even your marriage. I just wanted to ask. Yes, please. There are some people who are thinking like I'm thinking. So thinking I'm, sure, like I'm sure we will get interactive. <laughs> Yes, it's also for churches. Because see, the mindset of entitlement is what brings about the need for corporate governance. Precisely. Because people think that it's mine, I can do whatever I want with it. That's where the problem starts. And that's why the world is saying, we haven't learned from all their mistakes. This is how to do it. 
Precisely. I just wanted to chip that in. Precisely. So it mm. is important for you to understand the dynamics of corporate governance. Mm. Corporate government is not entitlement. And I, at the point, I will tell you, it's like um, somebody who is an autopilot. Mm. But there are sequences before you get to that level. And, in, and those sequences are the things that we don't adhere to mm. at all, especially those of us in this part of the world. I'm excited to learn more. Yeah. So yeah. let's look at the fundamentals. Now, the first thing, there are four things that is, is very, very important. The first one is the people, the purpose, the process, and then the performance. Mm -hmm. Now, I start with the people because it is the people who comes first in corporate governance. Because people exist on every side of the operational or the business equation. They are the funders, they are the board, they are the stakeholders, they are consumers, and they are, some can be impartial observers. People are the organizer who determine the purpose to work, develop the consistency processes to achieve it, evaluate the performance outcomes, use those outcomes to grow themselves and other people. So people in corporate governance is a key. Mm -hmm. And that is why as people, we always have what we call HR policies. Mm -hmm. And if I ask in Ghana here, how many institutions have, it's zero. It's so pathetic. But to establish a company or an entity, it is important to also know what kind of direction you take your people through. The second one is the purpose. And the purpose, I always say that, oh, well, when you sleep, you have vision. In the vision, you have a dream that will lead to the vision. And the vision will lead to the purpose at which you are living. That is the mission. Okay. So the purpose is very, very important. Now, maybe one day we'll come here and talk about the reason why some people become entrepreneurs. Hmm. Because of necessity or because of um, or inheritance yeah, inheritance, or because of opportunity. Yeah. And I've seen that, and I can say this on authority, 60% of our entrepreneurs are because of necessity. Mm. They didn't get a job. So any time I mentor these uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with this organization, any time they want to live like the way they are living, unless I get a huge amount of money before I move. But inter entrepreneurship is about innovation and creativity. And therefore, you have to get your purpose right. And every piece of governance exists for the purpose. And to achieve this purpose, you must think about exactly where you are going. Mm -hmm. There are three things that you need to do. Where you are coming from, where you are now, and where you want to go. So, and therefore, if you don't know any of this, then you, you run into ditch. And every one of these policies that we are talking about project should exist to further the next agenda. Yeah. So I'm doing X, Y, like this master class. We are doing this to feed into, and I'm happy you said that you went to the field. Mm -hmm. It is important because what will pertain in the food may be different from the principles that we are. Exactly. And, and even the interpretation of it. Exactly. How the layman mm -hmm. understood what you are saying corporate mm -hmm. will be different from whatever textbooks. The interesting thing is that I'm waiting for one day that our courses will be, run, be written in our own dialect. That will infuse our norms and culture and all those things there so that the interpretation will be easy. Mm -hmm. But here you have to read and then code or decode before you're able to understand. So if you have somebody that you are not able to do, you run into difficulties. Mm -hmm. So the purpose for that is also key. The third one is the process. process. The process in, in, is, is by which people achieve the company's purpose. The process is developed by analyzing performance. Mm -hmm. So in some development project, they will say, oh, let's do um, monitoring. Over time, then we do evaluation at the end of mm -hmm. it. The essence of this is that we want to align it to the objectives. Yeah. So when people write business plans, sometimes they write it for the purposes of getting money. And I think you mentioned a while ago about debt or equity. Yes, it's good. But currently, we don't even do those things. Mm. They are not so beneficial to our system. The main thing is that when we get the structures and patterns, mm -hmm. which is as a result of corporate governance, you don't have to worry. Yeah. It is important for us to know that. So whoever is coming to invest or give you a debt mm -hmm. must also understand. So elsewhere, they will say, where is your plan? And it is important for us to take note of that. But the plan must, the bane of the plan must be the corporate governance as well. Mm -hmm. 
And you see, I kept on saying corporate government. I have not talked about leadership. In a few seconds, okay. I'll, I'll go there. To leadership, right. Yeah. <laughs> so the processes are refined over time so that you can achieve your purpose. So from time to time, you go back and say, ah, I, I said this. We say we'll work within five minutes. Are we on five minutes? Do we have three minutes? A while ago, I'm, I'm, I was looking at uh, your gentleman here, mm -hmm. and he said, get ready. Do this, do this. They are all process. Mm -hmm. In fact, these are things that we teach. We call operations management. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to be controlled or guided by these principles. As And the last one is the performance, which is enshrined also in the skill set that you have. Your ability to look at results of a process and determine whether it is successful or the success was not enough and how do you imply that into your findings? Mm -hmm. One of the primary functions of governance process is the results. Okay. So when you come to this and you are saying that I've done A, B, C, D, and there is nothing to show, it's not so important. For me, I always say that those things are outcome. For example, go to school, I go to school, morning, after morning, afternoon. You have finished your degree, isn't mm -hmm. it? But what is the results? So me, as a manager, I'm interested in the results. Mm -hmm. So some people ask me, I say, okay, then we are going to write, get an expert like Constance to write this corporate governance manual in this. That is not what is important. Mm -hmm. But what kind of results will you be getting at the end of you the notice day? I'm smiling because I had a similar conversation this week with a group of friends, and I said, unfortunately, even though effort, you know, we like to be emotional about, I tried, I tried, I did my best. The world is not waiting. The world is not going to catch you slack. Not at all. The world is not measuring your effort. No, at all. We thank God that you tried. But what do you have to show for it? Don't tell me what you can do. Show me the what you have done. Thank you. So that's the point that you're making. Yeah. If I walk into your company at the front desk and the front desk person cannot tell me what the vision of the company is in their own words and understand it, I don't care how long you've been communicating. Me, I'll fire you it's the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting there. Yes, you, you know what I mean. I will fire you the, the next day because you must know. Exactly. And that's why whenever you employ people, you must take them through orientation. Exactly. It's important for us to also take note mm. of that. So there a lot of things depends on the first one, the people. Mm. And the people is all the stakeholders that I'm talking about. Now let's look at the basic principles. There are four things I want to. There are a lot of principles, but all of them start from these four. These four. The first one is accountability, transparency, then the government itself, and the fairness. Mm. By trans accountability, I'm looking at the obligation and responsibility to give explanation mm -hmm. to people or to my stakeholders of the action or conduct that I've exhibited. This helps businesses to manage risks, mm -hmm. protect the existing value, and enable further value creation. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I always have a problem with the, the how they connote the banking crisis. Mm. But they were supervisors. So where were they? Is it because of the chicken and egg story? Because I'm a boss. And that culture is no good. Ultimate responsibility. Yes. Uh, in certain tribe, uh, in my, my tribe is, it is the young person who goes to the other and say, ask me whether I'm fine. Okay. The guy is, 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 is pronounced. It's interesting, yes. So it's always in this part of the world, it's about the elder. It's mm -hmm. not about the child or the young person is always. And that is some of the things corporate governance wants to correct. Mm. We all are stakeholders. And once we play our role significantly, mm -hmm. it will help. So that's the accountability aspect. The transparency ensures that all the company's action can be checked here I hear sometimes when people are looking for data, it's, it, it's not even there, let alone to know what is going. Mm -hmm. And recently, I seen the time passed, there are issues where some people wrote to some institutions and they say it's not there. They say, go to the head office, we have done this and that. What kind of this? If we continue to live like this as a people, forget it. Yeah. And I'm not saying only for government and business. I'm also saying for individuals. Exactly. You are a man and you, you have to lie to your wife in all kinds of... Or you're a woman, you have to lie to your husband mm -hmm. in all kinds of things. You are not transparent. Yeah. That relationship will not grow. So transparency is a shared responsibility for both in the process of corporate governance. Thank you. In whichever context. In whichever. It's important. So when we start asking that, be transparent. Because this transparency brings some kind of trust. You know, it removes all kinds of ill feeling from mm -hmm. the other stakeholders. Yeah. But if there's always something you have to hide, I have a friend anytime he has a call, he has to move outside and receive <laughs> it. You think the next person will be there? No. In that sense, you are not fair. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Because fairness requires businesses to provide an opportunity for shareholders to vocalize their grievances yeah. and, and address yeah, their and issues. And even with the concept of reciprocity. Yeah. If you are being transparent with me and I'm being transparent with you, I'm motivated to do it more and so are you. That creates a sort of centrifugal force and that perpetuates the existence that we're looking for. Precisely. If you, I'm being transparent with you and you are not being transparent with me, it makes it difficult for me to continue to be transparent. Yeah, so you. you also try to... to, so, uh, see uh, to I mean, the, the point you're making is, is, and, is valid. And then the, we come to the law of common good that nobody moves out, nobody goes out. And the last one, like you <laughs> said... Is that what we say in a local palace? Say, Papa Nyeshe. Bonin su Nyeshe. But we are not preaching that. We are not no, preaching. no, no, no. We, we are not. We are saying that we should stick to the rules yes. and we should move forward. And with all this, the, the thing end of this is the responsibility. Mm. I always say that rights goes with responsibility. You may have right mm -hmm. to sit in this studio, but I also have responsibility to educate our audience exactly. on the little or the experiences that I have. Yeah. It's not that I will come and just push my waist mm -hmm. uh, or become like Booga. Is it Booga? That dance. That the song, yes. Yes. Uh, so you, you hold your... Your chest up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. You must have right, but there's also responsibility, responsibility. to that as... And with this, we know that there are no more of importance about corporate governance. Mm. The first that we can say is that it creates a system of rules and practices that determine how company operates. It's also add to ethical business practices, which leads to financial viability. Mm -hmm. In fact, if, if the systems are okay, the storms will come. I'm not saying business, you don't have storms, mm -hmm. but you still prevail. It's also preserve and strengthen stakeholders' confidence. I think we said it a yeah. while ago. And on the positive side, it supports stakeholders' base. That helps to generate the organizational, social, and emotional support. Mm -hmm. So you look at the house of folk. I'm coming down to mm -hmm. even sports. Mm -hmm. You look at Asante Kotoko. Mm -hmm. You look at their followers. Mm -hmm. It is because the manner that they organize that. Mm -hmm. Why don't we organize same to this our, mm -hmm. our governance system mm -hmm. so that a staff or employee will be ready to die mm -hmm. in inverted commerce for the mm -hmm. company. Which is even an example I was going to give that you, you find that in recent times, a lot of the corporate institutions are learning from our services yeah. uh, with, with, with specific reference to the military. Yeah. And so sometimes they organize booth camps and retreats to the military installations so they can learn from the discipline of, of the military. Yeah. I mean, why is it that when an instruction is given, a soldier will follow it. Why? Why? Because they have a template. As you speak, what comes to my mind is the word is template yeah. and format. Yeah. Because these two things are telling you that this is the way you can do it so you can survive. You hold part of it. I hold part of it. Let's do it together. I have a right, but I also have a responsibility. Thank and you. that's the point that you're making. They work in tandem yes. so that together we can get the best results. So I, I mean, you're on point. And I, I hope that our, our business owners are, yeah. are listening so, to it as well. A few, a few years ago, I was in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, mm. and it's a naval base. And they have annual um, gathering that mm. every year the naval command will come and mingle with, um, mm. like we are saying, with the civilians. civilians. Bring all the accoutrements, all the things that they mm. need, and explain to them so that they are not scared about what mm -hmm. um, they are doing. And at the same time, the, the military also now have some kind of fail with Interaction, the civilian. Yes, exactly. So you don't have this kind of confrontation and it's the same operation. In fact, the strategy that we use as a business people mm -hmm. is coming from the military. Yeah. It is go. important for us to know that. There you go. So what are the practical issues? Now I come back to leadership. Now here I'm going to announce something strange. Mm. I'm saying that in the 17th or 16th century, Adam Smith came with four factors of production. Mm -hmm land, labor, capital, and management, which is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, Professor Nana Opon, has come out with the, ne the next one, the fifth one, which is called authority. Mm. And I'm going to link up the authority to the leadership. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a different day for conversation. Of, mm. It's a whole ball game right. uh, um, that we'll discuss. So leadership itself is the ability of individual, a group of individuals to influence and guide followers mm -hmm. or other members of organization. And here I'm going to quote WCH uh, Prentice who says that effective leadership take a personal interest in the long-term development of employees mm -hmm. and they use tact and other social skills to encourage employees to achieve their best. Mm -hmm. So leadership is not going and take and suppressing people. Don't say it. Don't you beat them. You, you punish them. I take your money from your salary, your allowance. No. 
That is not There's leadership. You mentioned the tact. Yes. And a synonym to that would be circumspection. Yes. It's really key. Maybe yeah. you can just hop on that for me. Yeah, yeah. So, I've got a few minutes before we go for commercial break, but yeah, just hop on those two for so me. So the point I'm making is that being nice or understanding mm. is an issue. It's about tapping into individual motivations in the interest of furthering the, an organization-wide goal. Mm. That is the tact aspect I'm talking. Yeah. So I have your interest. And I will perpetuate that interest to mm. be able to achieve the goals that are... That has been set by yeah. the organization. Yeah. And it is important for us to. So, leadership provides that energy and determination to make corporate governance effective in achieving the organization's purpose and goals. And therefore, it is, it is the complementary aspect of leadership that drives the corporate governance. Mm. Mm. Can I continue? Yes, please go okay, ahead. I, 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 I've got a few more minutes before we go. Okay, so. Break, so. I'm going to again quote <laughs> Professor Nana Pong uh, on the issues of corporate governance. And this is how he put it. He said, the main problem of the poor, because that's the end product, is not poverty of resources, mm. but poverty of imagination brought about by sick cultures that are neither dead nor alive, but best described as subjects of creative and intellectual coma. That's deep. <laughs> yes. And I will explain further. Was, what is poor? What the poor need then is not the handout from foreigners. Mm. Or this is that or adjustment program or IMF or this. That is not what we need. But permanent healing from our deep sleep so that we can be strong and free people. It's awaken something inside yes. of people. You there know. is an agency that, as you said, I must perform this program. Mm. There is agency that have to be here 30 minutes before the start of this program. You and know, that is what we are lacking. You know, when you started, um, there's a conversation I've always had with, with some friends of mine. When you started, you talked about the scripture. Yeah. That, you know, um, yeah. God fruitful, yes. be fruitful and multiply. I've always maintained that in every endeavor, in your businesses, in life, wherever you are. And I had someone here on the show who also talked about the same thing. There is the residue of the potential to be fruitful yeah. in every endeavor, yeah. both in you as motivation and in the things around you as resource. Precious. And that's why I agree with Professor Nana's quote that yeah. all you need is an awakening yeah. in to get you. some fire in your belly to say, I've looked at this tree stump for five years. I've not thought of anything. But suddenly I look at it and I see potential, potential I've never seen. And that's what we're talking about, to awaken something inside of you that you never saw before. And it's around us every day, except that we are asleep and we are in... What, what yeah, we are in coma. Exactly. That's the word. And, <laughs> and a while ago, I was discussing with Constance. Constance said, I see God in his own wisdom. Every child has been guaranteed one year free food mm. from mm. the mother. The have, word, you, have, you, have you realized exactly. that? The word that the, the, the other resource says, there's abundance. Yeah. It's like having an abundance mindset. That was the show. So everything around us, there's abundance. To win it. You see, fruitful and multiply. Yeah, to add to that, you see, God knows that we need tables and chairs, exactly. but He created a tree. Exactly. I like the example you are giving. Yeah, so <laughs> out of the tree, we create trees. So, yes. until, like we said, until that kind of the awakening comes into you, you only see a tree as a tree. You don't see its relevance as a, something that we can and use. If, for I, if you go and ask God for a chair, He will mind you. No, no, because because <laughs> God has given us the wisdom and everything. If you just tune in, this is Masterclass here on the Super Station Joy 99.7. We're sharing some great thoughts on corporate governance with Dr. Dumanya. We want to take a quick break. When we come back, we get interactive. We take a break right now. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. Today we're talking about corporate governance and leadership with Dr. Bernard Dumanya. We're sharing some great thoughts here. We're interactive right now. Pick up that phone. Give us a call on 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. You can also send us your comments on WhatsApp on 055 Nine nine seven. Let's hear your thoughts. Do you own a company? Do you know someone who does? Are you related to someone who owns a company? Do you work in a company that's owned by someone else? What is your corporate governance structure like? Let's share thoughts. I always say that life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself. Let's hear what your situation is, what your examples are. Share them with the world and let's all become better for it. Numbers to call 0302216541. Or you can also send us your comments on 055-1111. Nine nine seven. If you've got any motor vehicle of any kind, the Goyle APSA Momo POS um, is available to you today. Goyle, your, your oil marketing company of choice, keeps making life ever so convenient for you. 
Doyle now accepts Momo for all fuel purchases at key selected stations. Just remember to Momo it at Goyle. And that's not all. You can also use your bank card to buy fuel at Goyle. And this is made possible by APSA. So drive to any of our Goyle filling stations now and buy your fuel or pay by Momo or a bank card and you're good to go. Goyle, it's a good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedi. I think I've got a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Um, your name Hello. is where you're calling from. Good afternoon. Nanaya, this is Joe Nikwanen. Um, oh, Joel. I'm calling. Yes. How are you, Joel? Yes. Where are you calling from this afternoon? I'm calling from Joelu now. Okay, how's Joelu this afternoon, my brother? Good, 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 good. Great, great. Talk to me, Joel. Yes, so I, I just wanted to chip in something about what your uh, panelist said. Um, that success is actually inherent in every seed. It is the environment in which you plant it mm. that would give you the result. Right. And so, basically, what, what he was talking about in connection with um, how corporate governance is, um, our, our institutions would have to step up the way our people are trained so that they can understand the essence of proper corporate governance and uh, we will be successful as a people thank you so much joel you thank couldn't you. have said it uh, better for me i've got another caller on the line um good afternoon you welcome to master class your name and where you're calling from yeah my name is william calling from uh, william Dutton, I'm calling from Dutton. sorry william i've got a bit of feedback if you can step away from your radio set for me or turn it off completely and just speak to me on the phone yeah i've done it also so, and um, yeah. where are you calling from, yeah, William? I have a little question I want to ask. Yes, uh, where are you calling from, William? Yeah, I'm calling from Tema. Hey, how is Tema this afternoon? Yeah, we are all fine. Good, good, good. Talk to me. Yeah. yeah uh, I want to know, at what stage of a company establishment do we put into the corporate governance practice? And what are some of the things we should consider or put in place in the form of corporate governance? See Dr. Dumanya smiling broadly, so please keep listening and... Uh, <laughs> Um, we'll take we'll, so doc. Let's write that question down. Okay. Um, we'll take one last another caller, not a last caller, another caller, and then we can answer them together. So th this one says, at what stage of develop company development do you um, put the corporate? Yes. Government. Okay. So I've got another caller. Uh, good afternoon. You welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from? Chidiak. Hey, my brother. Been a while. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my brother? Good brother. Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, in the society that people don't have sense of agency, will he propose that all our students that are coming out of school should go for military training before they get into the society? <laughs> Chidiak, that's a, that's a good question. Please keep listening. We'll, we'll try and answer that. So I've got Thank a, you. Please keep the calls coming. So let's, let's answer Chidiak's question first. Yes. Um, I personally hold that view mm. that instead of national service, we should have six months um, military tra uh, training. Um, this is because, you see, we cannot separate discipline from systems. Mm. We cannot separate discipline from co corporate governance. So instead of national service, let's take our, our the first three, four months, our students through a military training. Mm. And you could see the difference between somebody who has gone into a military training and, a, and a somebody who is just a carefree. And again, it comes back to what we are talking about, systems and patterns. Mm. Maybe one day we also have opportunity to talk about patterns in corporate governance. And that will give us a clear um, idea about some of these things. So, Chidiak, he agrees with you. Doc, Doc agrees with you. 100%. Um, um, agree, William, William from Tema was asking you, whether you, um, need, at what point of your business should you? Yeah, the beginning. Businesses have four phases or four stages. The startup, the survival stage, the growth stage, and the succession. And you have to start from the startup. But you see, it's a, it's a corporate governance document is a living document. It's not like you have written it and then you leave it. And No. Each stage, you have to tweak it a little bit to fit the stage you need of to the grow business. together. Exactly. It's a living document. It's a living document. So right from the start, but as you grow or in the survival stage, you have to also get your your corporate governance mm. work. Because you see, you start business with three people, and as you grow, you need a general operations manager. You see, organically, so it is important for us to to 
Mm. To look I think at the that. first the first caller um just kind of supported the point you made about the fact that in every seed there's inherent yeah. some potential in it. But so I continue from that point mm -hmm. that the average African, I'm just now yeah. thinking, is intellectually and creatively bankrupt, including me. Mm. I I read some books which says that maybe we have we have large size of a brain melanin that's why we are stopping all this mm. but i think also from what the the second caller said that we need certain level of training and the an training, awakening that is yeah required. the training will definitely that's what i'm going the training will just um try to kind of push us so what about inherent uh, mechanism in us will, will now help us to to come mm. out i always say that it's not guineas that brings the best out of you but it's competition Mm. Yes. Mm. So competition always, but you realize that Ghanaians don't like competition. Anytime they have been, com me, I, I want to strive on competition mm -hmm. because that is what will bring the best out of you. Mm -hmm. And and all is because we are intellectually bankrupt for most part of the things that we, we do. Yeah. We, and when I say intellectual, it's not about academic work. Oh, you write easy. No, mm -hmm. that's what there are professors who are intellectually bankrupt. There are people, and I'm happy mm -hmm. at the back you were saying that you have gone through this phase. Mm -hmm. But going through the phase is not enough. It should be also a reflection on who you are. Exactly. So when people complain about companies, about nations, about home, it's just a reflection of who you are. Yeah. Because if we are people and we don't want to observe or go by any rules, mm -hmm. our leaders will also do the same. Someone said to me once that, yeah, have you realized that you see the world the way you are? And not the and not the way the world is. So I'm sitting here thinking. I'm looking at Dr. Dumanya now. I'm probably not looking at you the way you are. I'm looking at you the way I am. So it's my perspective and my perception which I used to define you. Precisely. Look, I don't know if you understand. No, I agree. <laughs> so it, it just it just goes yeah, to support yeah. what I said. That yeah. if I'm bankrupt and I'm looking at you, what am I even looking for? In my mind, I'm just thinking, yeah. and, and and I'm just coming back to why people even vote. You know the decisions we make. Sometimes you listen to people and, I mean, this is, this is without prejudice to anything. People make decisions on very little things. And it, it, it tells the level of your appreciation. Yeah. So you hear people say, oh, my partner, oh, one, who you fit? Yeah, yeah, nice one. And that's the reason yeah, why yeah, he's, he's from my hometown. Because, yeah, yeah, it's my tribe. And then I'm even looking at the work the guy is coming to do. Yeah, I have you know, a friend. He say, oh, oh, you're going to me support on. Oh, you're going to But Okay, so what we're saying here on the show is that you must rise beyond that Thank level you. of thinking. Yeah. Add value to yourself. See what's happening in the world. Become more relevant to your context. And then let your decisions be born out of much more richer considerations other than the Just personal and basic level. Yeah, of what you see. Okay. Um, phone lines are, are still open. 0302216541. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. Let's share your thoughts on corporate governance. You can also send us your comments on 0551111997. I've got a comment here. This one is from Papa Ansa from Latte Equipim. Papa Ansa, good afternoon to you. Um... It says, good afternoon, Masterclass. In fact, I'm really enjoying your program and the topic for today. Uh, okay, right. Okay, so uh, it's not just Papa Asa who's listening. Uh, he's listening with Madame Florence Benefo of Hermon Dew Company. Thank you so much for um, for listening to Masterclass this afternoon. We've got a few more minutes here on the show and uh, a bit of time for a few phone calls. 0302 I've got a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. Yeah. My name is Martin Atafin. And oh, to, Mr. Finn. To to you. Yes. <laughs> it's good to uh, hear from you, sir. You, he was a resource person on the show. Oh, okay. Mr. Okay, Finn, talk yes, to yes. us. Um, and, and Dr. Duvenier oh, is a good Martin. friend of mine. Yes, I, I know <laughs> Martin. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, Doc, you, you, you mentioned a word that triggered uh, uh, me to, to make this call. It's, you mentioned discipline. And I think that the bane of, uh, uh, of our businesses is because we, do, we lack a certain self-discipline and accountability. If you combine that within the concept of corporate governance, I think that we are on our, on our way for, to, to success. Mm. Because of the lack of discipline, we lose a lot of, um, you know, focus on the things that we need to focus on and focus on the wrong things. So, yes, I think that corporate governance probably needs to be taught earlier in our lives. Uh, before we get out of school, so that we take it out there and use it as part of our um, working life. Mm. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Finley. It's such a pleasure to have you yeah, call into the show. Yeah. Um, I've got another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon, yeah. I'm Emmanuel. Right. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. Uh, where are you calling us from this afternoon, Emmanuel? Um, calling from Accra. Right. Okay. Talk to us, Emmanuel. Yeah. So I need bits and pieces of the conversation, but I want to find out from you. Drawing an inference from last week's conversation about uh, uh, equity and uh, debt financing. I wanted to find out how does that tie in into corporate governance, particularly when you are starting a business um, with partners who are coming in with an equity contribution. Uh, how does that tie into corporate governance? It's it's a very interesting question, I, and I, I wish Dennis is listening from PwC. Dennis, if you're listening, I've got a few more minutes. Please give us a call on the show <laughs> okay. and let's address that question. I but dog, dog, yeah. let's yeah. let's. Okay, so there are two main things that we do in finance: mm. equity and debt. Now. Let me start with equity. Equity means that you give part of your company to a shareholder. Mm -hmm. On what basis? And when I do that, who is going to be the chair and who are going to be the members of the board? Right. All these considerations must. Because, you see, sometimes, and it has happened many times, that you bring people on board, they disagree, and the company will not grow. Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. So that is a, the key thing that you must know who runs the company, mm -hmm. take the decisions. The second thing is that you may bring somebody who has different agenda. So all these things are things that corporate government can curb it. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the debt aspect. The debt means that you are going to pay like interest, mm -hmm. on, uh, like you explained. But at what time am I going to take the money? Is it the startup time, the survival time, the growth stage, or where? Or I'm doing succession planning. So who's making the decision? And what's the quality exactly. of the decision? And what is the vision? Who holds it? Remember, I said when you when you dream, you have vision, mm -hmm. and the vision would adopt it into your mission. Yeah. And these are for the 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 corporate government. Those are the board. Is their decision to be the referees mm -hmm. and to look from the business from afar. That's why being mm -hmm. governor, we have council of, uh, yeah. members of council of states. Of states. They are, the essence of that is to advise the president. So, Emmanuel, what, what, what I want to say in summary is that essentially corporate governance is tops because you are making the decision, having a clear understanding of the business, its stage at which you are making the request, the need for that money, and then the liability that it comes with, whether you are able to field the liability. So corporate governance will look at all of those and make the decision and say, at this point, I cannot afford two seats on my board because when you come in, I don't understand what you are coming with and I don't need that at this stage of my business. So I'd rather go for debt. If you are going for debt, how much income are you going to generate? What is the strategy for income generation or revenue generation? At which point are you going to be able to pay back based on, on the terms and conditions received? So the link between the two is that the decision must come from a place of understanding and must be a quality decision that will not jeopardize the growth of the business. Thank you. And that will determine which decision to be made, whether debt or equity. I think I've summarized. No, no, that's that's yeah, it's Look, fantastic. This is yeah. so interesting. And yeah. I'm looking at the slides, and there's so much more to share. Yeah. But we run out of time. What is our take out for today? What should we look forward to in the conversation next week, God willing? Next week, we're going to look at corporate governance and finance. And, and finance. I'm happy our caller was bringing that. Right. Whether corporate finance has helped to make us poor mm. or poorer or richer. Mm. And in what dynamics? What is its implications on the bottom line of companies? Mm. Is it true that corporate governance is the key thing that led to this financial meltdown of these companies? Or there are other things that we can look mm. at? So mm. next week, we'll look at those issues mm. and we'll see how we can... If we remember them. nothing from today's conversation, what should we take away? Say that where the key thing about corporate governance mm. is that is create patterns and streamline the operations of every mm -hmm. institution mm -hmm. from your marriage from your business mm -hmm. from your country and anything that you do i remember when we had abu bakar latif here on the show talking about project management uh, and he defined project management i asked him that is marriage a project yeah marriage is <laughs> a project you know and these these things we learn they apply to every part yes, of our lives. So it's not just life. in isolation or in abstract. Yeah. Doc, thank you so much. We look forward to another conversation next week. Thank but you. But this has been Masterclass here on the Superstation Joy 99.7. God willing, we come your way again next week with yet another exciting edition. Thank you for listening and see you same time next week.